Now here we're going to produce an old stone bridge. This is in the Lake District in Northern England. It's going to build on that lesson we looked at early on in making uh, stones and stone walls and different ways to produce them. And you can see that I've already produced a picture which is to a fair degree of completion. And what we're going to do is to work our way through that before we get to the stone bridge so that you can see how we've arrived at this particular stage of the picture. Now let me say for a picture like this where you've got an awful lot happening in this area here, the stream, the bridge, the buildings, the grass and what have you, I'd always recommend you do a fairly uh, basic sky. And in the same with these hillsides here which have some cream and pale green and a little bit of cadmium red and uh, brownish streaks underneath to give that if effect of, of awesome heather. So in fact all of these areas here are little more than just blobs or streaks of colour that allow the viewer to make their own mind up what is actually happening. If we have a look at the buildings we've had a few different greys here and if you look at that DVD one where you're looking at grey colours then you'll see how easy it is to produce these colours at will. And similarly for the bridge itself. You can see that I've put a base colour in to get us going and we're going to produce, if we come back to the photograph, you can see that the bridge itself is actually quite a light colour. There's an awful lot of light coloured stones with dark mortar courses in between and some similar rocks below uh, leading into the water. So we'll have a look how that's treated and we'll also have a look how to produce the reflection without tears. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is to paint the underside of the bridge. Now you can see you can see part of the underside of the bridge. Obviously looking at this angle here, you can, can't see the underside of this part of the bridge, but from about the centre onwards, outwards, it starts to become visible. Okay, like that. Perhaps use a slightly smaller brush. This time there's a little bit more blue in this uh, paint. Immediately you can see you've got that sort of three-dimensional effect underneath. Now the next thing we're going to do is to start producing the stones that we looked at in the photograph. You can see that the stones, there is a, a definite pattern to these uh, stones in the arch itself, all designed to lock very, very tightly together, which gives it its strength. But the stones above are pretty random in size and pretty random in the way that they're actually been built up to create the walls of the bridge. So there's no need for you to worry about getting something that looks like a series of brick courses. Right now, I don't want it to frighten you to death having looked at this, drawing lots of little chain links all over the bridge. I've started here having drawn a few of them to put a little bit of uh, paint in and we'll come back to that later on. There's several techniques you can use. You can use this technique as I'm doing at the moment where you, you virtually are painting every single stone. Just make sure that if you do that you're keeping the stones uh, different shapes and different sizes so that as I said, it doesn't look like a, a brick course, a set of brick courses that has gone wrong. Or you can do something more like that where you could perhaps have two or three bricks every so often and another couple of bricks every so often. Let's do it up here and you can see perhaps better what I mean. For instance, if this, you can have perhaps something like that. You don't need every single stone painted in. To, uh, to define that. But there we are, it's very, very quickly filled in. I've not done this far wall yet, uh, but we'll start filling these in now with some uh, tone and some colour. Now, for the mid-tones, 
what you need to do is to have two or three colours at least on the go. I've got this sort of mid grey, I've got this greeny grey and I've got this pale grey here. But by having at least three colours on the go and dabbing them in in a random method like that, then it soon becomes, it's actually quite therapeutic when you get into this. Uh, but you can very quickly produce a whole lot of stones all over the place in different colours. As you then go back into a slightly different colour, this is a bit sort of dark and it's got a little bit more blue in it, like that. You can see that it starts to give a little bit more of an interesting effect. And the beauty is the base colour you've got also then adds as a further uh, stone colour for the little bits of stones here and there that you'll miss, as you assuredly will. Now you can see I'm just not going over the stones particularly, but I'm also almost or also putting in little flicks of light and dark or light paint rather almost in between where the rocks aren't. That's just to represent the little bits of flint and stone that are like that one for example there. Just a few more highlights at the top stones there and we'll come back to that if needs be but you can you get the idea. Now we're going to have a look at uh, the same effect but with these stones here. Okay, now all I'm using is a thin brush, or you can use the rigger if you want, and I'm just drawing a whole series of thin dark lines to represent the dark stonework, or the shadows between what will become the stonework. Right, now you can see that we've painted these dark stripes in, and I've gone over with this lighter colour and painted the, the, um, the light colours in. And that started to create, it's, it's given us certainly here a much more uh, raggedy and uh, less predictable edge. I'm now going in here and there with a little bit of brown, it's almost like a third colour. And it, it's one of those um, techniques really that it's almost impossible, if you want to, to do it reasonably well, it's almost impossible to just sort of paint one layer or one coat or one colour and say oh there it is it's done. It's going to take several different light medium and dark coats or in this case stripes to create the sort of effect we want as you can see there I'm painting out with the brown some of the light colours sometimes I'm doing it intentionally sometimes it's it's just sort of happening accidentally and you can see now <clears throat> how much better that looks than the original picture where it was just a fairly uniform arch before we put any detail in at all. Right, well we're not far off there now. We, we've come back here with several layers of paint. We started off with the dark blue stripes and the dark brown stripes. Then we went over with the light coloured stripes then we went back with this brownish colour and I've gone back in here and there with um, some light colour with one or two again. The only thing that really we need to finish off now is to do the reflection in the water. Now in the photograph you can see that the reflection, the water is very very still and the reflection is almost, a, well it is virtually a mirror image and I'm not going to foist that on you because that means you, you, you're asking for trouble if you're trying to do this the same. If you struggle one way, then you're going to certainly struggle if you're trying to do it upside down. So what we're going to do is to make this water a little bit more rippled, a little bit more ruffled. And that means that we can get away with a, a, a rather more ruffled and raggedy reflection. Right, so what we're going to do is to get a general sort of outline of the, the bridge, this sort of horseshoe shape, this in, or well, well, it will be an inverted horseshoe shape, but you can see the way I'm dragging this colour across in a very much of a horizontal manner. Right, you can see that we've taken 
a little bit of titanium white and ultramarine blue it's pretty much the the color that we've used there and this time we're dragging some of the stream or the the blue ripples back into the to the brown just to give the impression that the water is rippling across the reflection okay I think we'll, uh, we'll finish on that but I hope that's given you a few ideas for stone textures and for wall textures and the relationship we have with reflections and water and middle distance buildings and not having to put every single brick and stone in place to give a convincing effect so there we are there's the little bridge at Wattenlath in the Lake District in Northern England.